Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are headed out on the water. I'm about to back the boat in. I've got the family with me. We're headed out to do some fall fishing. Most of our videos this fall focused up shallow. Today we're going down deep. We're throwing spoons, underspins, swim bait heads, maybe a crankbait. We're going to focus on those deeper and some offshore fish. It should be a really fun day. Now we were slated for calm, nice conditions today, but that is not what we've got. We've got a heavy north wind that just kicked up. We're getting a late start today. I love fishing the midday as we get through fall. These fish like that warmth. But with this north wind, it's gonna give us some difficult conditions. I think we'll be able to push through it. We're going to start off fishing down deep. Those are the fish that are the least affected by the changing conditions. We'll see how it shapes up. Here we go. Nice smallmouth to start the day. That's that tactical bass and finesse swim bait head. It's an X zone four inch swimmer on the back of it. Nice little smallie. With these conditions, we've gone to hard structure to start. Fish in a steep point. It's got really deep water access next to it. Just trying to get a feel for what these fish are doing. Here in a minute, after we've got a fish or two, we're gonna head out and start looking for offshore fish but that was a fun way to kick it off Step one was just find out if these fish would bite under these conditions. That doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. We're able to get bit. I caught them on the Kitek and the Swamer. Now we are gonna head offshore. We're gonna go out. We're gonna do some graphing with the electronics. Does that sound like a good plan, Sierra? Yeah, sounds like a good plan. We're gonna go out here offshore, out in 20 to 50 feet of water on some flats. Start looking for bass that are schooled up and chasing bait around. If we can find that, we should be able to catch them one after another. The hard part is finding them. So we'll be spending time on that Solix, just driving around, looking, trying to find the fish. So this general area we're in, I've fished a lot and I have never, oh, there's fish on it. We just found them. I fished this area a lot and I have never seen this house foundation before. Hopefully you can see it. Here we've got one side on one side of the boat. I went right over the center of it. So on the left side of the boat, we've got part of it. Let me back this up. On the right side, you can see the foundation. You can see the steps into the house coming up. Let me zoom in. Look at that. You can see the steps coming up into the house. And then back over here on the other side is the back side of the house. We may be shooting through a window because we've got a bright spot and there's definitely some bait fish and fish sitting on this thing. We're gonna give this a try. I've never seen this on this spot. We're just off of where I normally fish, a little deeper. We're in 49 foot at the moment, trying to find some offshore fish. And this is probably why the fish are always in this area and I've never pulled off far enough to see it. Pretty awesome. So we're running down lake, trying to find calmer water so Sierra can be more comfortable. We got down here where the wind isn't blowing and I start seeing seagulls flying up above. When I get close, I see grebes down here on the water. 
I don't even have to look to know that there's about to be a pile of bait fish here. Hopefully there's bass on that bait, but keeping your eyes out, spotting the birds, goes a long way to catching fish. Let's see what's here. that tactical bass and finesse swim bait head. So, so far we've been scanning a lot of flats. Haven't really found much. Um, moved up on some rock, a little bit shallower water, about 20, 25 feet and pulled that one off of it. Spoonfish. Gotta get back down there quick. These fish get fired up and turned off in the blink of an eye. Here we go, here we go. Stop. Ready for this? Pop. Pop. Come on. Oh, missed it. straight back down. The whole key is to get them fast. You moved up, baby. Nice. You okay, Sierra? Oh, it's too bright? Large mouth coming up from so deep, we've got no color. The school is in about 40 foot of water. One and three quarter ounce spoon dropping down there just as fast as we can go. I love this kind of fishing. <laughs> Thanks for catching them for me. <laughs> Smallmouth. We got all three species out of the same school. Awesome. throwing that chartreuse. She's throwing morning dawn, both UV. So much fun.
work. Thanks. Another nice small mouth. Awesome. They've disappeared off the electronics. This is one of those times where that big tail spinner shines. I can fan cast around the boat and relocate them. Small mouth. So one thing that we've done to our spoons that makes a huge difference for your equipment is added a, a swivel on top of that spoon. It eliminates a lot of that line twist, takes out 90% of the headaches while you're spoon fishing. Other than that, it's just drop down, pull it up, and let it fall down on a semi-slack line so that it flutters. If you're on a tight line, you lose the flutter. We've talked a lot about this in the past. I've had a lot of videos on how to do this, but essentially pull it up, semi-slack down so you can feel it stop or feel the bite, but slack enough that it'll still flutter. These fish come unglued. They just come running for it. Man, it's fun. <laughs> Such a fun way to catch them. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. The whole goal today was to spend some time fishing down deep. We found fish on three spots. We never found the mother load of fish that we were looking for. I'll explain that here in a second, but we found them in three places. That first stop, that was on the edge of a creek channel, a big deep water point on the edge of a creek channel, splitting two arms, a natural place for those fish to come and pile up. They were suspended. They were about 30 feet over 40 to 50 feet. That's where we were catching them on the smaller swim baits. I assume that was because of that north wind that came in and really threw those fish for a loop. Cece was catching them on a tried and true Kitek. We're both using that finesse head. I caught them on that X-Zone Lure Swammer, the four inch. That's a bait that I've just started playing with. A couple videos ago, we did that underwater Ned Rig video. I'd forgotten how much I liked some of the X-Zone baits. I'd picked one up for that video and I really liked how that bait looked underwater. So now we're trying their swim baits out. I was very pleased with that today as well. It almost had that paddle tail, that like Bastrix look where that super aggressive side to side roll, much more like a hollow belly swim bait than a Kitek. The other baits that we were throwing the tail spinner, which I just picked up a couple of times, but that tail spin, that's a Damiki axe blade, and that's the one ounce. What that lets me do out here in this deeper water is fan cast around and locate fish as they're moving, because that first spot was an easy spot. It was that point. After that, we started working mud flats. We're scanning miles and miles of mud flats, trying to find those key features that the fish are sitting on. It was really a struggle to find them today. What you're really looking for is bait fish. If you can find that giant bait ball out there, you know, if you've got five miles of mud and there's 
few rock piles here and there, maybe a couple of creek channel bends, that sort of thing. If you can find that big wad of bait sitting on that stuff, you are set. Those fish will group up on it and they'll hold and they'll just eat and eat and eat. We never found that today. Our second spot was one of those key spots. It was a rock pile completely surrounded by mud, but there was no bait. So Cece just picked up, nice. The one fish off of that one. And then our third spot. Thanks. Where we still are right now is where a creek channel comes out of an arm and ties in with one of the main river channels. And what we've got here is what we were looking for, bait fish but we never found that big ball of bait fish. It's just scattered small balls of bait with five, 10, 15 bass feeding on them. But there's maybe within a cast distance of us, maybe six or eight or 10 different bait balls with bass on them. So they're moving around a lot. That's where that tail spinner comes in because I can fan cast around and locate those fish more quickly as they get out from under the boat. And then last, of course, is that spoon. That's that Blade Runner one and three quarter ounce that we talk about so much. Now the spoon, I'm throwing that on 20 pound fluorocarbon, straight fluoro. That keeps it as it's falling, that keeps that line from coming around and getting hooked by that hook. That'll drive you crazy. That heavier fluorocarbon, it's got a little more body to it. It'll stay straight out and it'll eliminate that. The big thing with these spoons is get these fish up just as fast as you can, get them in the boat, Get, get them unhooked quick and get them back down. You don't want to keep them up because they'll bloat up, but you also don't want to slow fight them up. They'll come off. With an ounce and three quarter out in front of their face, their head shaking, that thing will come out. But that one and three quarter ounce spoon, we added a spro swivel on there. I'm fishing at Chartreuse. Cece's fishing it in Morning Dawn, and it's working. These fish, again, where those two creeks come together, it's about 40 feet deep. But they're just scattered all around us here and it is going. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along. We've been so focused on shallow. It was fun to turn around, face that deep water, catch them a different way. I hope you can apply this to your water. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.